Today I am outside of DC Pianos in Berkeley, California, and as you can see, they have a bit of a unique thing going on out here. A lot of piano companies would not do this, but DC Pianos does. They have three old, beat-up, funky pianos outside on the sidewalk for anybody to walk by to come and play, and this would entice people to come into the store and see what is inside. Now at first glance, you might expect to find more pianos like this inside, and while there are a few like this that are scheduled to be rebuilt, there are many, many more amazing things inside the store. So let's walk in and check it all out. If we come inside this door, one of the first things you will see here is this piano, which is a model that I believe is made by Petroff. Yeah, you can see the Petroff logo here. And this is intended to show you guys what the inside of a piano looks like. This is the harp of the piano. The harp is also known as the frame of the piano. It's this metal thing here that helps hold the strings on. Now, since this is not a, it's really not a real piano, it never gets tuned, and therefore you can make creepy, weird noises with it. On a real piano, on a real functioning piano, you should never ever do that, especially on the bass end strings, because the bass ends have copper on them and the oils from your string, from your hands can tarnish the strings. But on a model like this, you can basically feel free to do this, at least here at DC Pianos, because they're awesome people. I have seen um, people who work for, you know, they make the sound designs for movies and stuff, take a harp from an old piano, much like this, and use it to make all kinds of creepy sound effects, and it's really great for doing that. And when they, when they find like a harp of some old piano in a junkyard, they'll basically abuse it, they'll throw things at it and hit it with hammers and make all kinds of crazy noises. But don't do that here at DC Pianos. But this is a cool little demo here of this. It's pretty neat. Let's walk this way and show you guys some of the other things here. This is a Schaefer & Sons piano in a cream color, kind of unusual. Over here is a really lovely Steinway & Sons Model S. This is one of my favorite pianos here in the store. We've got an interesting Kawai here with a bit of a unique case design on it. It looks pretty new. I think Kawai actually still makes pianos kind of like this today. Here's another Kawai console. This one's built in 1986, and you can kind of tell that by looking at it. It's in good shape, but it does have the kind of 80s aesthetic that you might expect. This one here is a Knight Upright, and these ones here are a bit uncommon in the States. I think this is the third one I've seen, but it's the first one I've seen in this cabinet style. Um, it has this unique kind of spring-loaded like lid prop thing that you can use to prop up the lid which is kind of cool and this is a night piano they were actually made in england this here is one of my favorite pianos at dc as well this is the tom thumb piano it's a five octave little piano with one string per note unfortunately it has been sold but i'm very happy for the person who bought it because they have a unique special little treasure here Here's another unique, special little treasure. Once I get the fallboard on this closed properly, this is a Honer or Hoffman and Kuhn Pianetta. I called it a Honer because the name reminds me of Honer's Pianet or P yeah Pianet. And uh, it's a really unique spinet piano that has a fascinating way of closing the lid. Let me just put this over here. You can see here that the lid on this actually closes like this. It's got this beautiful art case style wood on it, and it's absolutely amazing. It's in beautiful condition. It was actually originally built in 1937 and it has a surprisingly good tone. I have a video of this out on my channel if you want to know more. Over here is a Somer and Company. It's another spinet that DC, I believe DC, has refinished this piano. I think the insides would probably all be original but they've refinished it to this cool gray color to make it more modern and I really like the aesthetic. There's another one on the other side that I'll show you in a bit. Here's a Kanabi upright piano. Here's a Kawai upright piano. We've got another interesting one over here. Careful behind you. There is an Erard piano built in London, even though Erard was a French company, and this one here is actually built apparently in 1820. So it's a very, very old piano indeed, much different design, much different sound than you'd find in a modern piano. And this here is also something a bit different than you'd find in a modern piano, a really cool way of hiding away the music desk when you don't need it. Really, really cool. And I've also done a video on this, so if you want to hear how this sounds, you can go check out that video. We've got a Yamaha upright here, we've got a Schaefer & Sons upright, and this one here is one that DC Pianos has actually rebuilt. It's built by a company called Krakauer, 
And maybe you'll be able to take a look inside, I don't know, but you can see, I can tell you that everything in here has been replaced except for the soundboard. New tuning pins, new hammers, new dampers, new strings, probably a new pin block, and likely a new action as well. When DC rebuilds these things, they go basically the full nine yards and they even rebuild the outs, no, refinish the outside case as well, and they do a fantastic job. This one over here is another one that DC Pianos has rebuilt. It's made by R.S. Howard, and it too has had everything gone through. New tuning pins, new strings, new hammers, new dampers, new, probably new action part, new everything, and also refinished, and it's absolutely wonderful. This was originally built in 1904, and if it wasn't for the, the wood uh, case, you'd actually hardly know it, because it looks, plays, and sounds like brand new. I think I will be filming a video of this here today, because I think it's gonna be really nice. Now, since we've got somebody here tuning the piano, I will actually go back and walk around the other way, but of course, tuning the pianos here is basically a full-time job here at DC Pianos. You'll, it's hard to find a piano here that is radically out of tune, but of course, since there's like 50 of them, that can happen from time to time. But it's great to see people here working on keeping the pianos in tune, so they always sound good when you come in to play them. This piano here is a, is a William Kanabe and Company. Now, Kanabe these days actually is a stencil brand that is manufactured by Samick. I believe they have some ties with Zeiler. When I was at Zeiler's booth at the NAMM show, I saw Kanabe pianos there. This is the Concert Artist Series, and it's actually a pretty decent piano. You can really tell that Samick is trying to make a respectable piano, and you look at this one here. This hinge is very stiff in the back. Oh, let me fold that down so you can see the inside of the lid, I mean, the inside of the piano. You can see that the harp actually looks like a quality harp. You've got a big Kanabe badge in the back there. Um, Samick is trying to make this be a very good piano, at least as good as they can. And I will be filming a video on this one today as well to show you that it actually is pretty dang decent. Here's the darker color, um, shabby chic piano that um, they have refinished here at the store. This is a Cable Nelson, and it's the same basic idea as the Somer over here. They've given it a more modern kind of a vintage look to it that I really like. Also, this looks surprisingly modern, even though the piano doesn't say the date on it, but the piano probably was made from maybe the 50s. But this is a really cool aesthetic that looks very in place today. Very, very cool. They have the fallboard closed on this. I don't know why, so I will leave it closed as we walk down this way. I believe that DC Panos is a Kawai dealer, so they've got quite a few Kawais here as well as Yamahas. They seem to specialize in used Yamahas. This is a Yamaha 300. Uh, doesn't say the year on it, but it definitely looks not new. Here we have a Yamaha U1, very popular piano. Here's a UX3 built in 1979. Wow, that looks, you'd think that's newer than the 79, but that actually, that's, that's, that looks nice. Here you have another UX3 built in 78, so basically the same exact thing. We've got another U1, we've got a U1E, not sure what the difference is, but maybe it's because of the art case. We also have an Eterna piano, which I did a video on one of these several years ago, and many people told me at the time that it was connected to Yamaha. So again, it's a Yamaha upright. Right here we have a Young Chang Upright, a budget-friendly piano here for you. It actually looks pretty nice. It reminds me of Kawai's. Kawai made a piano with a very similar style case back in the day. I forget the name of it, but they in fact did make very good pianos. We've also got a few pianos over here. Here's another Kanabi. It kind of reminds me of the one that we saw over there with the little wood trim. Here's a Zeiler. Um, DC is also a Zeiler dealer, so they have a few Zeiler uprights laying around here and there. This is an Edward Zeiler, I believe. Uh, this one, I believe, is Zeiler's lower line of pianos, but this one has a Made in Germany badge in the corner, so this is a very high quality piano. Here's a little tiny Kawaii upright piano. It's a continental design, which means it has no actual front legs. You'd think the piano would fall over, but it's actually, they tend to be very stable indeed. But this is a short, small little kawaii console that the lid doesn't want to open on it, but cute little thing. Here's another Edward Zeiler over here. And here is a Johannes Zeiler, which is another one of Zeiler's lower lines of pianos. Over here we've got more upright Yamahas, a U3 and a U1. That's the Kanabe we've already seen. There's a piano tucked away over here. It looks like it's another Zeiler, Johannes Zeiler. And here is a used Yamaha console. That is just about all of the acoustic pianos in this room, but I'm gonna walk back that way and quickly show you some of the digital pianos they have as well. Here's a Roland uh, digital piano that's made shaped like a really stubby baby grand. 
Here's a kawaii. Did I mention this before? It's an upright kawaii, very nice color, and also has a soft close fallboard, which is a nice touch. We've got a kawaii CN29, a Roland RP102. Here's a Kawhi over here with the RH3 action in it. This is a CN37. The funny thing is I've noticed that the Kawhi pianos that have an RH3 action tend to feel way different than the other keyboards that have an RH3 action, like the Korg SV2, the SV1. I think the Kronos has one. The Grand Stage has an RH3. Haven't played the Nord Grand, but I've heard that also uses an RH3 too. But these, the Kawhi keyboards have a much different feel than the other brands of keyboards who have an RH3 action made from Japan. So I wonder if they're even the same thing or if they're actually slightly different. Here's a, let's see, a Kawaii CA58. Here's a CA48. We've got more digital pianos over here. This is the Kawaii Novus NV10. I did a video, I think, on this exact same model um, here at DC Pianos as well. This is uh, Kawaii's hybrid piano, so it's digital, but it has the mechanical action of a real acoustic piano inside it, so it has a bit of a better feel than most stage pianos. Over here we have a couple more digitals. This one here is Kawaii CS11. And we've got a few more Kawaii stage pianos. This is the ES8. I've done a video of one of these, although it wasn't at DC. This is Roland's RD2000, which I'm kind of surprised to see here at DC, but they are, they do seem to be a Roland's dealer, so it's really not that big of a surprise. And up here is the Kawaii MP7SE, which is very much like the MP11, but it actually uses the RH3, and I also believe it has organ sounds on it, which I think can be controlled with the drawbar mixtures. I'm not sure about that one, but I know it has organ sounds. The MP11 does not actually have drawbars. Let's head around to this back room over here. Let me push this bench a little bit to make some room here. Let's walk around to the back side here. This is a new Kawaii keyboard. This is a Concert Artist CA78. I think I did a video on one of these before too. Now this here is a Baldwin Acrosonic that I think is in need of a little bit of love here, but these, these are actually very well-known pianos. These are well-known for being one of the best spinet pianos, at least one of the well, the best lasting spinet pianos that money could buy. And they often came in beautiful cases like this one here. I've never quite seen a design like this before on a piano, but it is quite pleasing. Don't know what the year of this was, but probably the 60s would be my best guess. Here's a Pearl River upright. There's a Chickering Grand. Someone who was following my channel said they were looking for Chickering Grands. This one here is all original and probably could use a rebuild, but nonetheless, here is a Chickering Grand. I'm sure you could be able to get DC to rebuild this when they get the time and they do a lovely job as always. I did mention that there are some old upright pianos here at the store. This one here looks like it's a potentially a restored chickering or at least one with new key tops. And there are in fact some old upright pianos in this back corner of the store. These are actually going to be scheduled for rebuilding at some point in the future, but they have not gotten around to it yet. DC Pianos will take all of these, I'm sure, and make wonderful, wonderful work of them like you saw out in the other room. This is an interesting little, little piece of little bit of piano history here. This is a birdcage action. Uh, it's kind of the predecessor to what we'd have in a modern upright piano, and as you can see, it looks radically different. You've got this huge rod that comes up to lift the damper off of the string. The action is completely different. And if you could feel the way this feels, it feels really mushy and awful. Now, of course, you probably could regulate these, but, but birdcage actions were notorious for being difficult to work on, hard to play, and just basically terrible in general. So when the more modern upright piano action came along, everyone switched over to them. DC Pianos has this here up on display because presumably it was in an old piano that they once restored and they took it out to just leave it on display because you never really see these in pianos today. And if you do have a piano with a birdcage action in it, chances are it's virtually unplayable either because the action doesn't work or because the piano won't hold a tune because pianos of this era often didn't have a harp in them like a modern upright would, so they will constantly be going out of tune. Let's move this bench in a little bit. This one here, I believe, is a Ludwig upright, although, as the Germans would say, it would be pronounced Ludwig. I was talking to someone who was German at the NAMM show, and I was trying to tell them about Ludwig drums, and they didn't get it until they made the connection, then pronounced it Ludwig. So I think that's actually how you'd pronounce this name in German. But here in America, here in the States, we say Ludwig, and Ludwig was a very well-known piano maker back in the day. I don't know if Ludwig pianos and Ludwig drums had any sort of a connection at all. Maybe some of you guys would know. Here's a Merrifield upright. We've got a old Steinway K, most likely. Yeah, looks like it's a K. And then over here we have an unusually lumpy 
um, music. How does this work? What in the world? That is so, look at that strange music desk design. It just stays there and it's like this lumpy bump and I don't think it actually can fold away any differently. So that is really unique. I wonder what this piano is. Here's an Apollo upright. I think this may have been a stencil from the 80s, perhaps not. It says Toyo Piano, so I think it's Japanese. Could have been a second line from a Japanese maker, or perhaps a small Japanese maker that simply didn't last. Back here in the back room is where uh, DC has many of their nice pianos as well. This is a Steinway D Grand 9-footer that they have painstakingly restored. It is very nice. Over here we have two more Johannes Zeilers as well. And we've got another Steinway here that has a Sherman clay badge on it. This one appears to be all original. Probably is going to be restored at some point in the future. Here's a Young Chang upright, and down this way we've got some Kawais and Yamahas, some used Yamahas. This one's in pretty good shape too. What era, what era is this one from? It's a G2, but it looks like it's in very good shape. The strings are almost brand new. Here we've got Kawais over here, like I said. That's noisy upstairs. Here we've got some Kawais because DC Pianos is, of course, a Kawai dealer. This is the GX1 Black. <laughs> I'm actually pretty impressed with these little pianos. They do seem to have a good sound as well as a good action. If we go this way around the room, we'll find yet another aisle of pianos that's over here, and as well as one that's actually being rebuilt. A customer came to DC Pianos with an antique signway that they wanted to be rebuilt, but the important part is they wanted to have the soundboard left in the piano, because as you can see here, not only is the soundboard in excellent condition, but it also has this giant badge on it that you cannot get anymore. So the owner wanted to have this left in the piano. They didn't even want the soundboard to be refinished, because if you refinish the soundboard, that badge would have to go. So the soundboard is being left in just as it is, but everything else in the piano is being replaced. It's got a new pin block, it's gonna have new strings. I believe the harp has been resprayed, at least it certainly looks like it has to me. And I think possibly even new agraphs are going to be installed as well. So new everything except the soundboard, which is one of the most important things in a piano, is the soundboard. Over here we have a Steinway L that DC Pianos has already rebuilt and they've done an absolutely fantastic job with it. It's one of my favorite pianos in the store. Has a lovely rich sound and a very nice action. Again, everything original, I mean everything replaced in here except the soundboard which has stayed original. Just like on this one. There's more pianos back over this way too, but one thing I did want to point out that's kind of neat is right over here, I mentioned before that DC is a Kawai dealer, so here are two brand new Kawais still in the box. This was a GL30, they're both GL30s, I believe these are acoustic pianos. Um, yeah, and then on this side it shows that this is the underside of the piano, on this side is the top of the piano, so there's a baby grand packed carefully inside of this box that came all the way from Japan. So that's kind of cool that these actually shipped all the way from Japan in these boxes. So if any of you guys are wondering how pianos are shipped brand new, this is how. Here we've got a Baldwin piano, which looks like it probably has been refinished, but has left the old style logo on it, which is a nice touch. Here we've got a Weber, we've got a Steinway & Sons, a Yamaha, a Baldwin. Now Baldwins, you can tell generally what era they're from by looking at the logo. If you see here, this Baldwin has kind of this chubby round font, but there's no dot over the eye, it's missing. This can tell us that this is either a new Baldwin made in China or a late model USA piano. And if we take a look at the inside of the piano here, you can see that it says in fact, made in USA. So this would tell us that this is in fact a USA made Baldwin, but it's a late model one. And looking at the tag here, it says built in 1992, which is towards the end of when Baldwin was making pianos here in America. I believe they kept making them until the early 2000s. Then after that, they became the Chinese pianos that we all know today. One of the final pianos that I guess we'll finish off here with is these two pianos. This is a Kohler and Campbell, but this one here is another one of my favorites here at the store. It's a Busendorfer 170. It's a wonderful piano. It has a light action, a beautiful, beautiful sound, and I've done a couple of videos before on this as well. This is technically not the last piano here in the store. There are a number of uprights that are upstairs. Should we go take a look up there? I think so. What you'll find up there is basically basic level pianos, rentals, pianos that need some work, but still there is a market for these pianos and that's why they're here at DC Pianos. 
In a little back corner of the store that I generally never go in are two baby grand pianos, and both of them are Howard's. Howard was kind of like Baldwin's second line, but it was actually still a pretty good piano. Uh, Howard uprights were commonly used in conservatories as practice pianos, and this one here is a vintage Howard from possibly the same era. Not sure what year it is, it looks like DC Pianos is doing a bit of work to it, but this one here is a Howard piano. What's kind of funny to me is the fallboard that's on the floor back here actually says Baldwin Baldwin Howard on it in big font. Maybe you can see that. I'm not going to pick it up, but you can see that it says Baldwin Howard on there. Typically, these pianos would say Howard, a product of Baldwin, or Howard on the fallboard, and inside they'd say House of Baldwin, but I've never seen one that just literally says Baldwin Howard on the fallboard. Over here is a piano that also is a Howard. It only says Howard on the fallboard, though, but this one here is a more modern one. This is from 1991, I believe, and it is a also a Howard piano. I believe this still would have been involved with Baldwin. The the model says GC1404 or something like that. I'm not exactly sure if this was made in the States or if it was made overseas. Not sure what the status is in this piano, but it is in fact a Howard piano. Still appears to be connected with Baldwin because this font is the same that Baldwin uses. So here is the upstairs room at DC Pianos. It sounds like there's some people up here testing out pianos, but I thought I would show this to you anyways because it's kind of neat. You can see here there's just like an ocean of upright pianos here, and they're all really small, so you can see across the top of them, and it just looks really unique. There's also a massive amount of things in storage. Here we've got digital pianos all packed away in the boxes, and over there is a wall of piano benches as well, all packed away in the boxes, so that's kind of cool. But like I said, up here you just kind of have like your typical average upright pianos. This one here is a Baldwin Acrosonic, and I'm not really gonna go through and label each and every single one of these, but I will just kind of walk you through and show you these. We've got a cable, there's a Wurlitzer, there's another, it's a Whitney piano, a lot of kind of, you, yeah, I wouldn't say unique, they're actually pretty common pianos, but you do have a wide variety of pianos up here. Don't know what this one is, but it's been painted gray. It's a Milton. Again, never heard of that before. But there's a number of different pianos up here. There's a Sherman Clay and a Cable Nelson and all of these different brands up here. I don't know if you guys would even want to walk through all of these here, but you can just walk through and see all the different things. Henry T. Miller. Melville Clark, you know, lots of different pianos up here, a wide variety of things to choose from. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to walk you through the entire area up here because there are, they are all kind of the same sort of type of thing. Once you've seen one, you've sort of generally seen them all. But I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video here at DC Pianos. It's a really wonderful piano store. I absolutely love coming here and they have a really great selection of fantastic pianos. They also have, they kind of have everything in every range. You've got the budget friendly stuff, the higher end, more affordable things, and also the really high end special pianos. So they've got basically everything. The people here are really friendly and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you're ever in Berkeley, definitely drop by and check them out. They're absolutely fantastic. But in the meantime, you might want to check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, digital pianos, and everything else in between. So if any of that sounds cool, definitely go ahead and check it out. And if you do that, well, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.